I just dropped a track with Locksmith and Chris Webby. It's called Knock Em Down, and I want to get into the behind the beat for this one. I made this beat with Chris Keys back in 2014, so this is an oldie. I was surprised when Locke picked this one. We wanted something that was kind of old school, like some old school Eminem or Dre type shit. I'm going to play you guys the original, original beat. This is the old version with the old drums and everything, so this is an exclusive right here. Okay, so yeah, this shit does not knock, I gotta be honest. The drums are real weak, the bass is too soft, but it had potential. So now I wanna get into the real session. Now I'm gonna play you guys the version that came out with Locksmith and Webby. So for the kick and snare, I replaced out the original weak ass drums and put in a drums and knock kick and drums and knock snare. And we switched the bass from the real live sounding upright bass to an 808 from drums and knock volume eight, bow analog 808. And then on top of that, there's two of them layered. One of them is just the lows, as you can see right here. And one of them is more of the high frequencies with a little bit of dip in the very high frequency. So this is what they sound like individually. And then together. And then string pad for the second half of the verse. And this was like the main part of it. Chris Keys played this on his Nord lead. And then the second half. And then this was the chorus part right here. I did a staccato kick on this. And this is something Chris Keys played. Another track, layer, and then just like a little synth part. And that's it for the beat. Super simple beat. It doesn't always take a lot. Sometimes simplicity is good. Artists love just space to be able to get on the track. This one served a purpose. Like this is a real simple example of higher range. A lot of times you don't know what the song is gonna become. The way I start is real simple. Start with an intro. When I'm making a beat, a lot of times I will just work on an eight bar loop. So this is an eight bar loop. <laughs> So this is an idea, like when I'm starting, I'm starting the track with an eight bar loop, but a lot of times I'll start with the eight bar loop and I'll add a lot to it. Then when I'm arranging, a lot of times I'll start taking away from the track. For example, this might be, this might be the eight bar loop. Then I'll take out the strings, so then you have a change. A lot of times I'll use subtractive methods to arrange. I find that's the easiest way. So you just keep adding and adding and adding, then you start subtracting. So you might loop that and take away an element. So that way when the first part flows into the second part, it has a change. So let's hear it without the master chain. This is not like the final mix that I did in Pro Tools. This was like the quick mix for me to send to Locksmith and Chris Webby. This is without the master chain. Holy shit, this one's doing a lot. <laughs> weak, weak. Now with the master chain. Big difference on this one. This master chain really made the shit knock. Decap. On this one, I have some gain, no master, gain, it's clipping, <laughs> ozone 9, EQ, Gullfoss, the cheat code, without it, with it, so I have the recover set to 29 and the tame set to 26, more than I usually do with this plugin. If you notice, it gives it that top end shine. And then the glue compressor. Without it. 
with it. So we're doing like three decibels, four decibels of gain reduction and some makeup with soft clipping, then a limiter. Even more, just two decibels of gain. This is not how I would mix a record record, but this is how I would mix a beat. It sounds good enough, so I kept that as the artist reference.